In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation. And as always, it's great to be with you. And we always start our conversation by having recourse to Mary. Mary has many, many beautiful titles. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church but also Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. And in the Hail Holy Queen, we cry out to Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. This being said, let's start off our day, let's start off our week by turning into Mary. And saying the prayer that Mary loves most, and that prayer is the is the Hail Mary. Let us pray the Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now we're going to turn to our spiritual director. Who is our spiritual director? It's the Holy Spirit. So ask the Holy Spirit to help us. The Holy Spirit has many titles also. Holy Spirit is known as the paraclete. He's also known as the gift of gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the sweet guest of our souls. Holy Spirit is also known as our counselor. Holy Spirit is also known as our consoler. Holy Spirit is also known as our sanctifier. He who makes us holy. Holy Spirit is also known as the gift from on high. Christ's gift to us. And the Holy Spirit is also the interior master. Interior master, or we might even say our teacher in the things of God. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says we don't know how to pray as we ought. But good news, the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans. Ineffable groans so that we can say, Abba. Abba, which means Daddy or Father. So let's uh, beg the Holy Spirit to give us a lot of light a lot of peace, a lot of joy, a lot of strength, as we say. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. Thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady Guadalupe, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. St. Faustina, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. 
Well, we welcome you to our Perseverance family on this second Sunday in the holy season of Lent. And as always, we like to start off our conversation by praying with you and then offering our specific prayer intentions. So as always, I'd like to pray for all of you and pray in this special way, the prayer which would be the holy sacrifice of the Mass. There's no prayer in the whole world, no prayer in the whole world that is equal to the holy sacrifice of the Mass. That's right. The holy sacrifice of the Mass is by far the greatest prayer that we have in the universe. We might even call it the Opus Dei, the work of God. So in this great prayer, I would like to place all of you on the altar. All of you on the altar right now and the holy sacrifice of the Mass that I'll be offering later this morning. I'd like to place you, your intentions, your loved ones on the altar. That God would bless you in a very special way. These are some of my intentions I'd like to place on the on the altar for you right now. First, I'd like to pray for your sanctification and for your living out this holy season of Lent that all of us as a family, Facebook, live stream, family would be praying for each other that this indeed would be a very fruitful, very fruitful Lenten season. That's my prayer for all of you. That we live this Lent to the fullest extent possible. My next intention would be I'd like to pray for all of your families, that your families would be blessed in a very special way in this season of Lent. What we should try to do in Lent is uh, try to draw closer to each other by drawing closer to God. That's right. Yesterday in my men's group, Grupo de San Jose, I started off by saying we have to pray more, pray more fervently, but different types of prayer. We should have what's called personal prayer. Each and every one of us should have our own time with the Lord on a daily basis. We call that in our Perseverance family our daily holy hour, the hour of power. Daily holy hour, the hour of power. Next I mentioned family prayer. Some people say, well, I just like to pray by myself, but if you're living in a family, you should pray with your family too. Remember the words of Father Patrick Payton, the family that prays together, stays together. That's right. Family that prays together, stays together. And they mention another type of prayer, it's called ecclesial prayer. Ecclesial refers to the church. And most specifically, that would be participating in participating in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. 
that we're making reference to now is in placing these intentions on the altar before I celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass this morning. My last intention would be, uh, once again, with all of you to pray for world peace. World peace. Especially in the Ukraine. Remember the words of Father Patrick Payton, the family that prays together, stays together, and a world at prayer is a world at peace. And Father Patrick Payton insisted a lot upon the importance of praying the Holy Rosary. Praying the Holy Rosary. So there we have our, our prayer intentions. Yesterday in our conversation, what I tried to do was kind of go through with you an examination of conscience on how we're making out in our Lenten proposal. And in my talk in the group at San Jose, I went through the three different categories, five different things we could do in those three different categories. Remember we talked about the three-dimensional way of living at Lent. Go up, go in, and go out. Good way of remembering it. Go up, go in, and go out. Go up means we go up to God through prayer. Go in would be we enter into ourselves through a life of penance, sacrifice, mortification. And going out would be, the technical word would be that of almsgiving. But almsgiving can be interpreted in, in this way. Trying to help and serve others. Trying to help and serve others. And I gave a general idea to the man, and I'd like to suggest this to all of us as we enter into this second Sunday of Lent. And it's this, going up, we go up to God through a life of prayer. I would like to say, suggest uh, one element of prayer to all of us. It's the following. It's living out the holy sacrifice of the Mass. It's living out the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Some of you have made the proposal, even for years, to attend Mass, to assist at the holy sacrifice of the Mass even on a daily basis. And I would encourage all of you to keep, the, keep up that good practice. But try to upgrade your participation in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass in this way.
See if you can come early for Mass and dispose yourself better for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. That's right. How? By coming early. And by placing your own intentions on the altar. That's right. By placing your own intentions on the altar. You'll notice that the priest, usually at the beginning of the Mass, will mention for whom the Mass is being offered. That would be the primary intention of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. However, you can offer, you can offer many secondary intentions. And I'm pretty sure that all of you have in mind maybe some family member. Some family member that has walked away from God. Some family member that's in danger. If not physical danger, he's or she is in moral or spiritual danger. So in going up in prayer, that would be my first suggestion, that try to participate more fully, actively, consciously in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass by living out what is called the, the Offertory of the Mass. You're offering your intentions with the priest. And you have your specific intentions, the Mass is going to be much more powerful for you if you can learn living out the offertory, living it out all the more fully. Go up, go in, penance, mortification, sacrifice, accepting the cross. One penance that we could try to do, and this might be the best penance, is to give up something. What might be the best thing we can give up? Well, give up sin. You might rewind the film of the last time you went to confession. And see what is your what is your basic weakness? What is your kryptonite? Where are you most inclined to falling? We all have these certain sinful patterns in our lives. Find ourselves maybe in desolation, we find ourselves weak, and then we end up by succumbing to sin, capitulating to our to our weakness. So that would be a very good way to enter within and I'd like to say one more thing on this. And it's this. We really cannot overcome our basic weaknesses if we do not turn to God. And have recourse to God. Most specifically, we have direct contact with God as Catholic Christians by the frequent and fervent reception of the sacraments. That's right. 
by the frequent and fervent reception of the sacraments. In the two sacraments that we should receive frequently would be that of the Most Holy Eucharist and then the sacrament of confession or reconciliation. So going in, we want to give up our sin. We want to renounce our sin and our sinful tendencies. That's possibly the best penance we could do. But we can't do it by ourselves. We have to rely upon God's grace. And God's grace comes upon us <clears throat> most abundantly. God's grace comes upon us most abundantly in the reception of the sacraments and confession is the way in which we can, with God's grace, with the help of Jesus, the divine physician, conquer our sinfulness and our sinful patterns. Now, every sacrament has a specific sacramental grace. That of confession, that of confession, my friends, is its divine healing. Christ, the divine physician, the doctor, he touches us and he heals us. And he washes us clean by his precious blood. That's right. He washes us clean by his precious blood. Then the third dimension of the tridimensional way of living out land would be go up, go in, go out. Go out. would be that of almsgiving or charity, self-giving. There is a proverb or saying that may, re, might resonate within your heart, and it's this. Charity begins at home. The Hispanics have a, a really good proverb, and it goes like this. Candil en la calle, oscuridad en la casa. It's a good one. And that's translated by you are a candle or a burning candle or a lighted candle outside the house. But you return to the house in your darkness. So a very good Lenten practice might be in your family among your loved ones you might make a concerted effort to be more charitable more kind more ready to serve those who live with you in your own family They live with you within your own family. So you might make a concrete concerted effort to help out someone there in the family that is maybe suffering more, more lonely, 
going through sadness, going through sufferings and troubles. Remember what Jesus said, whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that, that you do unto me. So charity begins at home. Okay, my friends, I thought that that would be a good summer review for where we're at as we're entering into the second Sunday of Lent. This is an overview of the of the readings for today, and I'd like to focus a lot upon the gospel for today. Second, the first reading we have is taken from the book of Genesis. In which Abraham ascends to a high place. And Abraham offers offers his sacrifice to God. Animals that are three years of age without blemish blemish, as well as birds, birds of the air. And Abraham cuts them in two, except the birds. And Abraham offers his sacrifice to God. Much can be said about this, but like Abraham, we are called also to offer our sacrifice to God. We're going to see that Abraham will have a son when he's a hundred years of age. God will ask Abraham even to sacrifice his son, Isaac, on the altar. And God will say to Abraham, stop. What is God calling you to do? What is the sacrifice that God may be calling you to offer to him? Then we move on to the psalm. Today we have Psalm 27. The antiphon is, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. We can turn that antiphon into our own prayer and say, Lord, give me light. Lord, give me light. Light, enlighten my pathway, Lord. In the midst of so much darkness in the modern world, Lord, you want, you, I want you to be my light. Be my light. It's a beautiful prayer. Lord, be my light. Jesus is the light of the world. Lord, enlighten my path. But also he says, you are light and my salvation. The name Jesus means, it means God saves. A powerful prayer that we can say often is, Lord, save me. Save me from my fears. Save me from my sicknesses. Save me from my doubts. Save me from my insecurities. Save me from my anxieties. Lord, save me. As Peter was sinking in the waters. Peter lifted up his grace to the Lord. He said, Lord, save me. And Jesus, man of little faith, Jesus stretches out his hand, grabs under the hand of Peter. 
and they were able to walk once again on the waters. So the Lord is my light and my salvation. Second reading Second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. I'd like to just comment on one verse. And it's the following. St. Paul speaks about citizenship. <clears throat> The United States is a country that has many immigrants coming in to this country. And to become a citizen takes takes a while. There's a, a process that those the immigrants have to go through. And maybe maybe some of you have gone through the immigration, legalization, residence, and final, finally become American citizens. However, St. Paul offers us these, cons these consoling words. St. Paul speaks about another citizenship And he says, our citizenship, my friends, is in heaven. Our citizenship is heaven. Our real, eternal, permanent home, my friends, is not on earth. Our real, eternal, permanent home, my friends, is heaven. We should often call to mind what is our dignity that we are sons and daughters of God, but also our destiny. Our destiny is not temporal or transient. But our destiny, my friends, is our destiny, my friends, is is heaven. Our destiny is heaven. So that I'd like to lay in your hearts. Saint Paul says our 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 citizenship. Citizenship, my friends, is heaven. And that should give us a lot of a lot of hope, a lot of joy, a lot of strength. Because we do not have a permanent home here. Our permanent home is in heaven. With that, <clears throat> with that, we should, all of us, we should all make a concerted effort on our part. We should all make a concerted effort on our part. to do all we possibly can to get to heaven. Right now I'm giving this spiritual exercises program in three different places. And the foundation of our spiritual exercises program is 
called Principle and Foundation. In Principle and Foundation, my friends, St. Ignatius points out to us that primary purpose of our life on earth is not to have a long life or a short life, health over sickness, riches over poverty, honors over humiliations, but rather purpose of our life is to praise God in this life as well as to praise God in the life to come but also our, the purpose of our life is to save our immortal souls. That's right. Purpose of our life is to save our, to save our immortal souls. Save our immortal souls. That's right. To save our mortal souls. We're here to get to heaven. And that's exactly what the message of the gospel is today. I'd like to present to you a an artistic depiction of the gospel for today, then let's uh, let's uh, let's go through some of the most salient elements of the gospel for today. Here's a, an artistic depiction for you. I think you can see it pretty well. This artistic depiction presents the transfiguration. There below you can see three of Jesus' friends, his disciples, Peter, James, and John. And Jesus is in the middle and to his right and to his left are two, two of the key figures of the Old Testament. Moses, who's the lawgiver, And Elijah, who is the great prophet. You can say Jesus is, his garments are white, resplendent. And he's surrounded by light. So that's a snapshot, you might call a snapshot of one of the key elements of the gospel for today, which is the transfiguration. Now, let's take the whole scene. Let's take the whole scene and, and pull out some wonderful ideas that we can meditate upon. As mentioned in our course on the, on the Mass, uh, the church liturgical cycle for Sunday has three different cycles, cycle A, B, and C. Cycle A will get the Gospel of St. Matthew. Cycle B will get the Gospel of St. Mark. Cycle C will get the Gospel of St. Luke. So being in Cycle C, my friends, we have the Gospel of St. Luke. <clears throat> so let's... Uh, Let's uh, do some walking and pondering 
and imagining and contemplating and let's derive a lot of fruit let's derive a lot of fruit from this wonderful passage this by the way is the the transfiguration by the way is the fourth luminous mystery of the mysteries of light of john paul ii that he gave to us about 20 years ago the mysteries of light and john paul ii calls this the mystery of light par excellence so of all the mis five mysteries of light this is according to john paul ii the greatest of the mysteries of light The Gospel of St. Luke has many themes. One of the primary themes of the Gospel of St. Luke is the Gospel of prayer, the importance of prayer. In the first luminous mystery, which is the baptism of Jesus, the Gospel of Luke presents Jesus in prayer. So the Gospel of Luke with respect to the Transfiguration says Jesus took Peter, John, and James, went up the mountain to pray. There's a lot in that verse. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. Went up the mountain to pray. Now Jesus chose Peter, John, and James. Three of his apostles he took to ascend the mountain so he could pray and have this experience that they would never forget. So much as St. Peter in one of his letters mentions this experience in one of his letters later on. It was an unforgettable experience. But I'd like to highlight this essential message that speaks to me, and I think it will speak to you. Earlier this morning, I was making my holy hour, as I always make my holy hour the first thing in the morning, I get up and I I go to our private chapel and I expose the Blessed Sacrament and I make my holy hour. I like to call it with Fulton Sheen the, the hour of power. I make my holy hour. But there in the wall of the chapel is one of my favorite it's one of my favorite artistic depictions. And it's uh, an artistic depiction that I've loved over the years. And it's an image of Jesus and his sacred heart. And his sacred heart is outside his body. And his sacred heart is surrounded by fire, by fire. And there it's written in Spanish, referring to Jesus, it's El amigo que nunca falla. 
Jesus es el amigo que nunca falla. Translation into English, Jesus, he's the friend. He is the friend, not simply the friend in general, but he is your friend and my friend, and he's never going to fail you. So what do we see in this passage? We see Jesus purposely chose three of his best friends to climb the mountain of the transfiguration. To climb with him the mountain of the transfiguration. and to pray with him. Peter, James, and John. How might we relate this to ourselves? Very simply this. Jesus, as he wanted to enter into a deep, dynamic friendship with Peter, James, and John, Jesus wants to enter into a deep friendship with you. That's very true. Our friends, our friends will fail us at times. Even our best friend will sometimes be less faithful than we'd like him to be. And we fail our friends also at times. We have to be honest. But Jesus is this el amigo que nunca falla. He's a friend that will never fail us. So in this passage we can be we can be asking for the grace begging for the grace to enter into friendship with Christ to enter into this deep friendship with Jesus Christ he's a friend that will never fail us Jesus chose 72 disciples and he chose 12 apostles. And of the 12 apostles he chose, he chose three of those apostles to be his closest, most intimate friends. And they were Peter, James, and John. And he walked with them, he talked to them, he climbed with them, and he loved them as Jesus climbed up the mountain. St. Luke does not mention anything about the climb, but you can imagine you can imagine Jesus climbing up the mountain with the apostles and you can imagine that you're you're climbing the mountain with him and he wants to talk with you that's right he wants to talk with you not only does he want to talk with you but he wants to help you to keep climbing. What does this mean to climb 
What does this mean to climb the mountain? Well, we're called to ascend in our spiritual life. In climbing the mountain also means we have to we have to ascend Calvary with our cross. We all have our own cross. But we should never try to carry the cross simply by ourselves, but rather to invite Christ to carry to help us to carry our cross with him. So as they're on the mountain in prayer, the apostles were, they were contemplating Jesus. And the gospel points out with great clarity, you can look at this beautiful depiction of the transfiguration. that the face of Jesus changed in appearance and his clothing also became dazzling white. So white, bright, shining, almost like the sun. See, you can see a little bit here in this artistic depiction. Obviously it would be much more resplendent and bright than this picture, but you can see Jesus with his white clothes surrounded by light. How can we apply this to ourselves? You know, when you, when we, when, when we commit a sin, almost as if we become darkened, our interior garment, which we call our soul, becomes darkened. Sin is darkness. God is light. However, every time we draw close to Christ, who is the light of the world, he wants to cast out our darkness. For that reason, the responsorial psalm that we're going to be praying today is, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So as mentioned in talking about our Lenten observance, when we make a good sacramental confession, we make a good sacramental confession, what happens is the light of Christ, the light of Christ comes in us. We become illuminated. The light of Christ comes in us. We become illuminated. Then when we receive Holy Communion, we receive Holy Communion in the state of grace, more light comes within us. Christ himself, every time you receive Communion, Christ himself actually comes within you. And he fills you with his presence. So if we're going to be living out Sunday, which is the day of the Lord. Sunday is the day of the Lord. We want him to be our light.
and it says that when this happened, two men were conversing with him. Two men were conversing with him, and you can see these two men in this artistic depiction. There on the right, you can see Moses, who's clasping to his breast the tablets of the law, which would be the Ten Commandments. Then you have the other, who is Mo uh, Elijah, who has a big book, which is the Bible, the Word of God. Moses was the lawgiver and Elijah was the great prophet. Now Jesus incorporates within himself those two different men of the Old Testament. Meaning that Jesus is the great lawgiver. In his law can be summarized in the greatest of all commandments, which, which is the commandment of love. He says, love one another as I have loved you. And Jesus is the great prophet, the great preacher, the great teacher, like Elijah. So my friends, on this second Sunday of Lent, let us, like Peter, James, and John, let us walk with the Lord, climb with the Lord, listen to the Lord, contemplate the Lord. And ask Jesus, il amigo que nunca falla. Let's ask our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be always, at all times, in all places, let's ask Jesus to be our best friend. Indeed, he is il amigo que nunca falla. And I'll give you my priestly blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.